Now to this. It's this Thursday that will mark one year since the deadly attack on the nation's capital. This week here on Nightcast, we will be breaking down the traumatic events of January 6th. You'll hear from our members of Congress who were trapped inside. You'll learn more about the Minnesotans facing federal charges, and we'll talk to one of their biggest supporters. Here's investigative reporter Ryan Raich. It started as a protest in Washington, D.C., over the results of the presidential election. But the crowd on January 6th morphed into an angry mob that, by its own admission, was determined to stop the peaceful transfer of power. The rest of that day will forever be scarred by these haunting images. Rioters clashing with police and breaking into the Capitol. And these faces of fear, members of Congress who had to be barricaded inside. Almost a year later, there was still a sense of disbelief. How could this actually happen? And why do some refuse to believe it actually did? To think that Americans were attacking our very temple of democracy. On Capitol Hill, in the corner of his office, Congressman Dean Phillips keeps his worst memory wrapped in his best. Best memory, the Twins 1987 World Series victory. And my worst memory is uh, the mask I had to wear on, in the House chamber on January 6th. Here it is. It's one of the gas masks that was stowed under all the seats in the U.S. House chamber in 2002, shortly after the 9-11 terrorism attacks. Yeah. It's the gas mask he reached for in desperation. That's how it works. Yeah. After learning the Capitol was under attack. Yeah. Phillips and his colleagues were there to witness an important moment in history, the certification of the presidential election. An angry mob arrived at the doorstep of democracy, determined for their calls to be heard to stop the peaceful transfer of power. Hundreds, if not thousands, stormed the building, pushing through an overwhelming police. At one point, members of Congress, including the vice president, were trapped. Those 15 minutes... Uh, are probably analogous to being on an airplane where, that you think is going down. About 700 people all over the country have been charged for their roles in the insurrection. It's the largest federal law enforcement investigation in U.S. history. That investigation includes eight people from Minnesota who investigators identified weeks or months later through pictures, videos, and social media posts. They all face federal charges, ranging from parading in the Capitol to assaulting a police officer. A year later, none of them are talking. We spent weeks calling. This is uh, Ryan calling with uh, Channel 5. Driving across the state. So we're headed to Lindstrom. Minnesota. And knocking on their doors. But one person who would talk... This is at the Capitol. ...is Larvita McFarquhar. She is in charge with a crime, but has plenty to say about what happened that day. Did you ever enter the Capitol building? No, I did not. She went to D.C. last January with a group of friends to support then-President Donald Trump and his claims of election fraud. Stop Claims that were repeatedly investigated, litigated, and disproven. Now, looking back, would you still go to this rally and would you still march to the Capitol? Yes, because it wasn't about, it wasn't even about just that. The restaurant owner from Lind, Minnesota says she was also protesting government mandates brought on by the pandemic, including Minnesota's lockdown in 2020 that she initially defied. The government got emboldened and said, you know what, we did this to these people. Who can't we do this to? Truthfully, that's how I look at it. In an hour-long interview, McFarquhar explained why she marched outside the Capitol that day. She also defended those accused of going inside, including close friend Victoria White from Rochester, who is now under federal indictment. The investigators say that's her in the red hat right there at the front of the crowd. According to federal court records, White initially tried to stop rioters from breaking glass windows, but then pushed her way through police and into the Capitol tunnel. The DOJ says she reached for the officer's riot shield. No, what they were doing was hitting her and she was protecting herself. There's a big difference. Of course, they're going to lie and say that that she was going to do these things. Nick Farquhar, like many others, maintains that January 6th was largely peaceful. Push him back! Even though the assault on the Capitol Police is well documented through pictures, videos, and the officer's own words. I was grabbed, beaten, tased, all while being called a traitor to my country. 
I was at risk of being stripped of and killed with my own firearm as I heard chants of kill him with his own gun. A Capitol Police officer was killed that day, along with one rioter who had tried to break through the glass. More than 100 other officers were injured. Four more died by suicide in the months that followed that traumatic day. So you don't believe that there was violent acts I didn't on officers? On officers um, that the people who went there who were peaceful going there? Uh, no, I do not believe that. Lorvine, I just, because this is an important point, because I, we've all seen the videos, um, some, some things that are difficult to watch of shields being ripped from officers and then being beaten with the shields, officers running for cover because there's a mob of people coming at them. Okay, the video I've seen of that was a joke. How can you say that? Though? How can I say that? Because when what I saw wasn't they're going to pull a shield from a person, a police officer, and then use it on them? Come on now. So you don't believe that happened? No. For those who try to say either it didn't happen or what happened wasn't a big deal uh, or we should just move on, you know, I say no, no, no. No, no, no. I was there. Democrats and Republicans were there. The U.S. Capitol was stormed by Americans. At least take pause and acknowledge what happened and why it happened. You realize inside the chambers, lawmakers, even the vice president had to run for cover. People were putting on run gas masks on. Who is my question? The Run. mob of people who were using <laughs> flagpoles. Are you joking? No, I'm not. There is no doubt in anyone's mind that this was an attack on our democracy and on the Capitol. Erica McDonald was still the U.S. Attorney for Minnesota on January 6th. She was appointed by then President Trump. And so individuals who can't come to terms with that, well, then they're going to have to live with that. But the rest of us know what this was. In the days after the attack on the Capitol, McDonald worked with prosecutors across the country on the unprecedented criminal investigation. A year later, all but two of the suspects from Minnesota are pleading not guilty. They're potentially facing years in prison, like the man from Arizona known as the QAnon shaman who stormed the Senate floor that day. A judge sentenced him to three years in prison. What message does that send? Three years in prison? for one of the rioters. I think it sets an important standard. I have empathy for every single one of the people that came here that day. Empathy for the people who stormed the Capitol from a member of Congress trapped inside. I have empathy, uh, strangely enough, because I believe they were misled by design. And that is part of the congressional investigation underway right now. The January 6th committee is looking at who played a role in inspiring the attack that day, including former President Donald Trump, and whether they intentionally misled protesters and rioters. This week, we're going to hear more from our elected officials, the ones trapped inside, about their experiences one year ago. Plus, we'll take a closer look at the people from Minnesota charged with storming the Capitol, and more from our interview with one of their supporters. There is a lot ahead. There is also a new ABC News poll released just this week. Shows 72% of Americans believe the people involved in the attack on the Capitol that day were, quote, threatening democracy. But one in four Americans believes that the individuals were, quote, protecting democracy. Overall, the poll shows 58% of Americans think former President Donald Trump bears, quote, a great deal or a, quote, good amount of responsibility for those events. But the former president maintains what transpired was a protest. Ryan Raich will be back tomorrow night right here on Nightcast.